And when the Holy Spirit is moving, you have to be expectant. Because sicknesses who are moving away, poverty is going away, temptations are being washed away, situations confronting us are moving away. The Holy Spirit is moving deep in an expectant mode and expect God to move and to place your tears with joy, replace your tattered clothes, your shame with a priestly robe. The Holy Spirit is moving, it's moving over his children. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Sandy, 
Yes, see the Lord giving people weapons of warfare. See the Lord be handing over to people on this platform weapons of warfare. <laughs> People are becoming victorious over their situations. People are becoming victorious over their enemies. I see somebody in darkness running away because the fire around you is too much. They cannot venture because the Spirit of God is setting a wedge around your head around you. And so the enemy is like fleeing. They cannot toy with you any longer. God is doing something in your life, brethren. Shandiriya ma sandiriya shata, iya ka shata da da ma sandiriya da da. The Holy Spirit is moving so strongly. Somebody's tongue is receiving. Somebody's tongue is becoming thicker. Somebody is blowing a different kind of. Now, somebody is receiving a, a gift of deep, 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 deep tongue, the heavenly language. Somebody is receiving it now. The Holy Spirit is moving. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah, 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 I see the Holy Spirit convicting somebody. I see somebody going down on his knees and saying, God, enough, I've run back to you. I'm not turning back to the world anymore. I'm not returning to the world anymore. God, I submit to you. I submit to you. I see somebody, a gentleman, going on his knees at this moment, being convicted by the Holy Spirit and saying, enough is enough, devil. Enough is enough. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you for moving. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Iya masanda, iya masanda, dada ma. Iya kasanda, dada ma. Sabiya, dada ma. Sandi, iya dada ma. Sanda, dada ma. Sandi, iya dada ma. Sata, iya dada ma. Sata. Move, holy spirit, move, 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 move now more than ever. Thank you, holy spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, holy spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, I understand. When the spirit moves, I understand. I understand. I understand. Yes, yeah, so when they move, they move. But uh, 
Today is a different day, and I bless God for your life. Yes. Um, Chris. Which Chris is this? And who is behind iPhone? iPhone. Who is behind Chris? Who is behind iPhone? Unfortunately, I cannot use um, my WhatsApp because the same phone is being used to telecast um, Facebook Live. So if you send me WhatsApp now, I won't see it. Uh, Dr. Nian Ponsama. And today we are moving. We are sharing where today I'm going to be in my elements, a teacher. And what God wants me to share with you. Um, I, I, I understand why that song drops so heavily in my spirit. Spirit move. Last week, uh, after the, 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 the prophets have finished, I remember I mentioned that as Christians, we need to go beyond the Holy Spirit. We need to go beyond anointing and what we have to say is power. And I didn't know God was preparing me for that today. And as I was searching for verses and reading around, I found so much, so much, so much about anointing. I've been preaching about anointing. I love to talk about the anointing. But today I found so much I shared with some people. Wow. There are things that Christians need to crave. But most of the time we forget that and things, things, things work against us. So tonight I want us to look at something. Can somebody take us to... No, I have to read this. The Holy Spirit says I should read this myself. Isaiah 61 verse 1. It's a common verse that we all know. It's a very common verse. It's also in Matthew. Because the Bible records that when Jesus Christ went into the temple, when he started his mission, uh, 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 his mission at the age of 30, and he went into the temple and they gave him the scroll, it was this same text, text that he was given to read. And I take it from the New King James Version, which reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has set me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Hallelujah. Amen. So now let's look at let's look at the sequence. Let's look at the trajectory here. Jesus himself. You know, another name for Jesus is Yeshua Hamashiach. It means the anointed one. So Jesus Christ is the anointing. He is the word, he is the light, he is the truth, he is God, he is 100% God, 100% man. But listen here, he says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Number one, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Number two, because the Lord hath anointed me. You see, sometimes we may think that the anointing, the spirit of God, and the, and the power of God is the same thing. Of course, in so many ways, they are the same things. But at the same time, in so many ways, they are different. So Jesus himself is saying that the Spirit is upon me. And we know of a truth that when he was baptized by John the, John the Baptist, the Bible says that the, open, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended in, in a physical body. Yes, because the uh, Spirit are, are, are illegal entities in this world. So if the spirits can operate in, on this earth, they have to possess somebody. They have to possess something. That's why witches possess the bodies of human beings. That's why uh, you, you go and they say there's a God, there's a spirit. It is in a doll or a tree or a river or something. So the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove. And it, 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 it ascended, it descended on, 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 on Jesus Christ, your Lord and my Lord. So after the Holy, Holy Spirit had descended, then Jesus himself is testifying that because I am anointed. So it tells you something, that beyond the Holy Spirit, there is an anointing. But beyond the Holy Spirit and the anointing, there is power. Hallelujah. So tonight... The message that the, the Lord wants me to share with you is that crave power. Crave for power. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I don't know if I'm making sense here, but I'm going to walk you through something. I am a teacher. That's all that I do. So why would Jesus Christ, who himself is the anoint, who himself is the anointed one, Yeshua Hamashiach, still testify that after the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, he was anointed, and by the power of the anointing. This Jesus Christ went to do something. What did he go to do? He started to preach good tidings unto the meek, the humble. He, he, he said, he has, he, he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. He said that he, he has sent me to proclaim liberty. There is some feedback here. So for Michael, check your, check your thing. To, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And then the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So why am I going through this over and over and over again? Because many a times, as Christians, we think the Holy Spirit is enough. We think the anointing is enough. So if I take my own church, the Church of Pentecost, there is something that we, we are so much enthused about. Guys, please go to your room. There's something we are so much passionate about. Sorry. Guys, I, I think go, there is some radio yeah, go, or something. It's of my or case. It's my case. They, are, support, they, are, they have decided not to permit me today. Go, please go to your room. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. So now, with my Church of Pentecost, what is happening is that one thing that everybody is supposed to get is what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that is, that, is, that is a legal requirement that everybody who has stood somewhere and accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior received. It, it is in God's plan. Once you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, your Redeemer, the Holy Spirit comes to you. But what I'm saying here is that for some of the churches, we get to the visitation of the Holy Spirit, and that is enough for us. So we don't move forward. We don't go on to the anointing, and we don't go on to the power, the level of power. And that is why we are still where we are, and everything we have to run to somebody. That is why even common dreams that God speaks to us, or the devil tries to play with us, we have to run to somebody. We have to cry. We are afraid of everything because we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have experienced the anointing, but we have not yet gone to the level of power. But tonight, what the Lord wants me to tell you as a Christian is that you have to crave for power. As a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit already. As a Christian, you have the anointing already. You know, the anointing is simply consecration. So when Jesus, when, when God himself sat up in, high, high up in heaven and saw that David was so righteous, even when he was cast out of the forest, this is a, a verse I love to uh, touch on almost every time that I share the word of God, uh, Psalm 89, 20. God said, I have seen my servant David and I have anointed him with my, with my, holy, my holy oil. So what it means is that in the forest, David was righteous. And because he was righteous, the Holy Spirit was with him. Because he would sit down in the midst of all his troubles and sing, Yes, who did on And you say, Oh, but some surrodino. So he will sing, Say, Rade. Oh no, name Ah, Mashanda Satara Mashandi 
Oh my God. This, this is one of the days that the Holy Spirit doesn't want to allow me to do what I want to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you see, because of all these things that David was doing, because of his trust in God, because he didn't question God, he was a righteous boy. And God loved him. And the Holy Spirit was with him already. So the Bible says that the hyenas and the wolves and the, the, all the wild animals will come. And with, this, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the help of the Holy Spirit, he will deal with them. And none of the sheep was, was, was ever harmed. But God realized that the Holy Spirit is his companion, but the Holy Spirit is not enough. Because God had a purpose for, uh, uh, for, for, for David. In, in, in Jeremiah 29, what Christians we love to recite, that I, my, I, I know my plans for you. There are plans of, 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 of a good future and blah, 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 blah. You know what? God, for, for, to, to, to Jesse, the place of David was the, the, was, the, was the forest of no return. But to God, it was the kingship of Israel. And so God realized that the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit cannot take David to the throne. He realized that the presence of the Holy Spirit cannot make him overcome Goliath. Because mind you, King Saul and the other people, other men and warriors of Israel also had the spirit of God with them. But they did not have the anointing. So when this uncircumcised Philistine came forward and insulted them with the name of their God, his gods and, and cursed them, the Bible says that they were frozen like chicken. Why? Because they had the Holy Spirit, but they did not have the anointing. And above all, they did not have power. So God himself said, I have seen my servant David, and I am anointing him with my holy oil. Hallelujah, somebody. So what I want to tell you today is that if you have the Holy Spirit, for, for the church of Pentecost, my own church, uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the, the, the physical manifestation is your ability to blow tongues. And people have blown tongues for since they were children, but they are still where they are. Why? Because with the presence of the Holy Spirit, they don't seek to move forward. But let me tell you, if you read the book of Ezekiel chapter 47, the Bible says that, and the prophets looked, and he saw from the throne room of God, waters gushing out from all angles. And he says that, when I stood in, it was ankle deep. When I moved forward again at a certain cubit, it was knee deep. When I went, I moved forward at a certain cubit, it was, it was at my groins. And when I moved again, I had to swim. Why? Because the anointing has levels. And unless you get to the level where you swim, because I, Ezekiel the prophet says that when, he, he, when it became so mad that he had to swim in it, even the trees that were dead around the river, they began to have life. What I want to tell you today is that you may have the Holy Spirit, you may have the anointing, but you will not be able to give life to people. You may not be able to give life to your situation. You may not be able to tell the enemy to flee. When Jesus says that if you have faith like a master seed, you can tell the mountains to move and it will move. He's not talking about anointing. He's not talking about the Holy Spirit. He's talking about the power that a Christian is supposed to have. And we don't even know about this power. Now somebody take me to Acts 10.38. Acts 10.38. Acts 10.38. Acts 10.38. And somebody take me to Acts 1.8. Yes, Acts 10.38. 
Mami Abigail, you are sharing your screen. Go back. Unshare. Let me turn on this one. Uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. I read from the NIV. Yes. But if I do it, even though you do not believe me, believe the miracles that you may know and understand Acts that 10, the Father 38. is in me. Oh, sorry. John. Acts 10, 38. Somebody prepare as 1, 8. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. Amen. Amen. This is what I'm talking about. So let me take you back to Isaiah 61. When Jesus said that, hey, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. He did not talk about power, but he said he has sent me forth to redeem the lost, to heal the brokenhearted, to do A, B, C, D, to, give, to, set, uh, to, 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 to bring, uh, what do you call it, all those who are in captivity, to set them free. That is the power that we are talking about. So Jesus Christ himself spoke about the Spirit of God. He spoke, spoke about the, what comes after the Spirit of God, which is the anointing, and what the two together can move him to do, to propel him. To, you see, the reason why we are not able to tell situations to overturn in our lives is because we have the Holy Spirit and we have the anointing, but we don't have the power. And I've shared with you here, time without number, that there was a day that I was in South Africa and I was expecting three things. One from the University of South Africa, one from the Department of Education, Higher Education, one from another, my scholarship, my ethical clearance, and something else. I was going home. It was, a, it was Thursday. It was after three. I was walking from the office to my house to where I was staying. And you know, in South Africa, Friday is not a day you can count on anybody because everybody is going to a car. Yeah? They are going home to rest on Friday. But I looked up and said, God, this thing has delayed. I know if I am looking, I'm looking forward from a man, I will fail. But I am looking at it. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting it from you, oh God. It had taken so long that it looked like my scholarship was not going to come. It looked like the ethical clearance was not going to come. It looked like I was not going to get something that I wanted. Trust me, by the time I walked from my, the college I was teaching to home, when I finished my lunch and opened my uh, email, one of the responses had come. The following day, the Friday, one had come. At that point, it was not about the Holy Spirit. At that point, it was not about the anointing. No, at that point, it was about the power of God manifesting through his servant. It is that power that the young man stood and said, Son, be still until God gives me victory. It was not the Holy Spirit. It was not the anointing. It was the power of the living God. And the Bible says that for almost 12, 13 hours, the sun stood still until God had, give, had given them victory. Brethren, the Holy Spirit comes to you once you give yourself to Christ. Once you give yourself to Christ, God consecrates you. In some churches, they use anointing oil olive oil to sanctify you that is anointing but for these to manifest in the physical for you to take authority to possess your possessions for you to break the stronghold of the enemy you have to move from anointing and you have to exhibit the power that christ is giving unto you so in the verse that we just read that is uh, as 10 38 jesus himself again is saying it is being recorded that God anointed Jesus with power. And because of that, Jesus did all the things that he was able to do. The Bible says that when Jesus was baptized and he went into the forest and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and the devil came to tempt him. The Bible says that when he came back to town, he came with power. Remember, listen please, remember very well, you can write it down. One, 
When John the Baptist was baptizing Jesus, the Holy Spirit came in the physical form and rested on, the, on, on, on Jesus. So one, the Holy Spirit was there. Two, the anointing was there because Jesus himself is the anointing. But the power was not there. The Bible says that when he came back after being tempted by the enemy, he came back with power. So it took fasting for Jesus. Today I'm not talking about what we do to get the power. No, it, it, it will take all our time. I'm just talking about the power. Next time God gives us life, we'll talk about what to do to get the power. But one thing I've mentioned, a typical case of what Christ himself did was to fast. I'm not saying fast for 40 days and 40 nights, but make time to fast and pray, and you will get that power. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost, and because of that, he had power. And so when he spoke, the mountains moved. When he spoke, the, 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 the wind obeyed him. When he spoke, legions flee away. When he spoke, the dead came back to life. That is power. Now, apart from Jesus, the power is not a reserve of Jesus. Because he said, if you believe in me, greater things are you going to do. And so I want you to understand that the power, Jesus went uh, physically left us, but the power, he left it for us. So let somebody, somebody went to, who is uh, uh, at Acts 1 8. Quickly read what we have there for us. Acts 1 8. Acts 1 8. Yes, please. But you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Mm -hmm. And you, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. I know. I'm telling you two true stories here. Number one, somebody belongs to the Church of Pentecost. And you know the Church of Pentecost, we greet, praise the Lord, and we respond, hallelujah. Now, they meet at the workplace, and the junior officer sees the senior officer he attends church with, and says, oh, open hallelujah. And the man is bold, or let me say brave enough to tell him, aha, I'll say, praise the Lord. And he says, here is not about praise the Lord. Why? Because his, what he is doing there is not befitting of a Christian. And I know somebody, I know somebody who went to look for a contract with one company. He, the, he is not a Jehovah's Witness. But if you know Jehovah's Witness, the men, they call themselves bro, bro, if you have ever known a Jehovah's Witness. Now, this man is not a Jehovah's Witness, but he is going to look for a, con a contract from a company, and he meets somebody. They are all in the same enclave. They are doing the same business. So he meets the man, and he says, bro, and the man tells him, me your brother, ye be ye business. You see, with such attitude, we cannot proclaim the power. We cannot manifest the power of God. Because what uh, uh, Pastor Michael just read, is that he, we, Jesus is saying that he is going, but we shall receive power. And when we receive power, so what are we supposed to do? Take it. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, will be my witnesses. Yes. To? From Jerusalem. To Jerusalem. To the ends. It's okay. Now, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city of peace. But in the fiscal realm, Jerusalem is your home. Jerusalem is where we dwell. Jerusalem is our workplace. Jerusalem is everywhere that we find ourselves. And Jesus is saying that when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we shall receive power. And when we receive the power, we should not keep quiet. Why? Because once the power of God comes upon you, you cannot keep quiet. Even if your mouth cannot proclaim his word to bring salvation, your lifestyle will bring salvation to people. Everybody with the power of God brings people closer to God. So I remember one day a student of mine came to my office. And then he was reading some of the things that his classmates had written about me. And then one of the ladies said, oh, so that guy, he's a pastor, referring to me. Because apparently the, guy, the, the girl thinks I'm too straight in my lecture room and all that. And the guy thought I was going to ask him about the, who the lady is. I just smiled and said, my brother, you know what? I'm happy 
she is not saying that I once told her I love her, or I once told her to meet me in a hotel room, but she is recognized that I am doing all the things I'm doing, I am straight and I'm principled, and I'm not bending the rules because I am a pastor. I was happy with that. Why? Because we have the power to make the corrupt world see that we are different. And I remember one thing that's of Michael said that, I, I mean, I have not forgotten, that everywhere he goes, the first thing that he makes people know is that he is of a different breed. He is a man of God. And so he cannot do the things that everybody is doing. If you don't have the power of God in you, I'm telling you, you cannot make this declaration. Because you go and everybody is doing something, and if you don't do it, you, 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 you seem to be the odd ones out. The odd one out. Sometimes it looks like, Today my pastor was preaching, and he says there was a time that he was somewhere in, in the north, where you have to trek for hours and sleep under huts just to do the work of God. And one day when they were going, a lady from a native of the town was going with them. They are concombers. So far somewhere in the northern part of Ghana, they meet a concomber man, and the man is speaking to the lady, the native they are working with. And it translates like, so this pastor, does he not have anything better to do in his hometown that he has come all the way here? to be moving from village to village to preach? What, what is he here to do? Why? Because the power of God is in the man. And he cannot sit down. Everywhere he finds himself, he has to manifest the power of the living God. You see, all of us here, the reason why, one of the reasons why that we have the spirit of God, we have the anointing, but we don't have the power, is that we are even too shy to share the word of God with our children. We are even too shy to share the word of God with our colleagues. We are even too shy to make people, it gets to a certain point that we are too shy to make people see that we are Christians. Because the world is, calls itself Christians, but the world is, the, I mean, the world, we have so many people who say they are Christians, but they are not Christians. So sometimes we seem to be agreeing with them in, with what they are doing, and we, we, we can't tell them that, hey, this is where I belong. So they are gossiping and we are sitting there with them and laughing. They are talking about nonsense and we sit there. Sometimes we don't say some, but we sit and listen and we cannot even tell them this is not right in Christ. But Jesus is saying, declare my word in Jerusalem. Everywhere you find yourself in Jerusalem. He says, Judea, beyond your household, go to your neighborhood. Then he mentions, go, make it a national assignment. Then he says, all over the world, make it an international assignment. And it's so sad that now when we sit in church, people will take their phones. I mean, people are itching to go back to WhatsApp and Instagram and Twitter and whatever, not to declare the word of God but to share nonsense and to see the nonsense that other people are sending to them. But my brothers and sisters, if we want the power of God, we cannot do what the world is doing. Being a Christian means having the Holy Spirit. Being a Christian means having the anointing. But the power is a different ballgame. And if you look at the book of um, Luke chapter 24 verse 49, Jesus said something. He said, my power will come upon you, but wait in the city. I picked this scripture because there is something funny, but it's very important and sometimes it's sad. I was once listening to a pastor on radio who said that we have some men and women of God who did not receive the calling of God, but God just gave them a flash and they say they have been called. And so they are messing up. There is no power in them. It's just a little anointing God tested them with. You see, I will take you back to Ezekiel. When, 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 when you see what is happening in the spiritual realms, what the manifestations of the anointing, you are just ankle deep. Sometimes God will appear to you or you have an encounter with Christ or with the, in the spirit and all that. You may only be knee deep. 
Sometimes you may be doing things of Christ full time. Everybody sees you as a Christian. Everybody knows that you are doing the things of God. But deep down in your heart, there are things that you are doing that are not right before God. That is the most dangerous place. That is the loin deep. You are a full time Christian and a full time uh, non Christian. That is hypocrisy. But when you get to the level where you are swimming in the water, that is where the power comes. So I want to challenge you this moment that if you are an uncle deep Christian, please wait, fast, pray, do the things of God so that you move to the point that you swim and the power will come. Because the Bible records that they were two children of a priest. Is it the children of Sceva who were beaten by an evil spirit? Seven sons of Sceva. The seven sons of Sceva. You see, they, had, they, were, they, they were priests. Because in, the, in, in those times, the priesthood was passed on from father to male children. So by default, they were priests. By default, they had the Holy Spirit. By default, they had the anointing. I'm sure they had done some deliverance before in their good elements and all that. <laughs> but you see, the power was not there. So they tried to cast out a demon. And the demon said, hey, Jesus, we, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? And the Bible says that because they did not have power, instead of priests staying in the temple and casting demons out of the temple, the Bible says that they ran away from the temple almost naked. And the, and the demon re remained in the temple. If you don't have power, the devil will take what belongs to you and chase you. And that's why the Bible says that it has gotten to a point where the prince and the princess are walking and the slaves are riding on the donkeys. Why? Because we have the spirit. We have the anointing. That's why the Bible still uh, 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 calls us that respect of prince and princess. But because we don't have power, we have relinquished our position and we are now being enslaved by the original slaves. But I urge you tonight to crave for power to, to, to get to the position of power so that you will take your rightful position. Let's read the last scripture and end for today. Um, Acts 6, 8. Bishop, can you repeat? Acts, the, book, the, the book of Acts chapter 6, verse 8. It's about Stephen. Okay, Acts chapter 6, yeah. verse 8. Yeah. I read from the NIV again. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Mm. God bless you, sir. I told you, the power is not a reserve of Christ. He has given it unto us. And Stephen was not even one of the original apostles. Stephen was just a small boy. But because... He was righteous because he craved for power. God killed him up above the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit, above anointing. And the Bible says that this young boy, he was performing signs and wonders. One key that we need to know is that if you read the first scripture I read, Isaiah 60, 61, Jesus said that, God has, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me and he has sent me to. So before the power will manifest, you have to move out of your comfort zone and start doing the things of God. Not all of us can stand and preach. But as I told you, your lifestyle preaches volumes more than what you say. So if your mouth cannot speak it, let your lifestyle, let your attitude speak it at your workplace, everywhere you step. Let people know that you are a different breed. For some of us, God has blessed us financially so that we will use our finances to support the works of God, the things of God. That is another ministry. That is where power, can, that's how you can launch into power. So whichever form, but when the power of God is upon you, you cannot rest. You give your all physically, mentally, emotionally, and everything. I told you that sometime early last year, 
I sat in STC. They told me you cannot preach in STC, but there was a fire burning in me. I could not sit down. I had to preach in STC, uh, uh, bearing every consequence, whether they would throw me out of the bus or whatever. There was some fire in me, and I had to preach. That is the power. So, brethren, this was a young boy. And I want to tell you that the power is not too far. We will talk about how to get the power subsequently, not today. But the power is not too far. I am a living testimony. Sometimes when we stand to minister, the things that happen, you come back home and you ask God, how did you do this? Because you only told me to go and preach. They only invited me to come and preach. But where from the deliverance, where from the people falling, where from the people being drunk with the Holy Spirit, where from all these manifestations? Because he says, if you go and preach, signs and wonders will follow. So when we do God's work, the power is automatic. The power is in us. I have said the time without number that somewhere, sometime in 2011, I started suffering from stomach ache and I just ignored it. But on the third day, it became so severe that I thought I would be rushed to the hospital. Because after praying in the night and sleeping, honestly, I didn't pray about it. I don't normally pray about certain things. I leave it to God. But it became so severe that in the night, when I had finished praying and I wanted to sleep, the pain was just becoming excruciating. So out of pain and anguish, I was not praying. I was just rubbing my hand on the stomach. And, 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 and subconsciously, I said, oh, Jesus. Then suddenly, the pain started subduing. And I realized that there is some power in me that I had not utilized. And so I used the name of Jesus. And for years, I never saw anything like that pain again. What I want to tell you is that we have the power in us. We have to activate it. We have to get our ways right with God. We have to do what His Word has instructed us to do. And by so doing, the power of God will manifest just as it manifested in the time of the apostles, just as it manifested in the time of uh, young Stephen, just as we are seeing some great men and women of God manifesting the power of God. So ladies and gentlemen, I will end here, but I want to urge you, that there is power in the name of Jesus. If you have been stagnated at the point of knowing the Holy Spirit is with you, at the point of knowing that the presence of God is with you and you have some anointing, it is time to allow God to move you beyond the Holy Spirit, the presence, beyond the anointing into the place of power. Because it is by the power that Idahosa said he saw he was resting in his, in his room when he heard an unusual sound in his hall. When he came back, the devil was sitting there in his, in his, in his lazy chair and rolling, rolling the chair. And he just looked at the devil and said, oh, I didn't know it was you. He went back to his room and he slept. It is by this power that in December 2013, a cousin of mine, I think he's here, who has a prophetic gift, called me when I was not in Ghana and told me, my brother, people want you dead, so be careful. And I told him, my brother, for me to convert from a womanizer, from a drunkard, to a Christian, and not just a Christian, but somebody who is declaring God's work and bringing people from their situation to Christ, the devil will not rest. So this is not news to me. And I told him I normally fast during Christmas, but because of this challenge, I am not even going to fast this Christmas. I am going to sit at a resort. I am going to enjoy myself, and I want the devil to kill me. Then when I go, I'll ask God why he allowed that. When we entered 2014 January, I called him and I asked him, my brother, what is the devil saying that now? He said, my brother, God loves you. And I said, you are now talking. This is the news. Because the power of God is in me. And therefore, when the devil starts rolling, I will just stand somewhere and say, Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19 says, When the devil comes like a flood, 
the, the, the Spirit of God will raise a standard. And that standard is where the power of God is placing me. It's placing my wife. It's placing my children. It's placing everybody under the sound of my voice. And that place the devil cannot get to is for people of power. And the devil has, don't, that, does not have that power. So brethren, tonight, start searching for this power. As we are talking this night, Somebody is in a car going to Burkina. Somebody is going to Benin. Somebody is going somewhere. Why? Because they want that. They want power, but that power is temporary. I told you. They say that um, Michael Schumacher, where he fell down and 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 went into coma. That thing around his neck that for years had been his. They call it what? Luck, chain of luck. When he fell, that thing also fell down. It left him. But when we have power of God in us, it does not leave us. The power of God will always go ahead of us. The power of God will always do battle for us. The power of God will always win battle for us. And therefore, Man. I urge you, crave for power. For Jesus himself testified that the power of God has been able to make empower him to do all the things that he was sent to do. May the living God visit you tonight. May the living God be your God. May the, li- the power of the living God rest upon you so heavily as I am feeling now that if there has been any situation confronting you from today, you speak out of power and the goalposts will shift in your favor. The tables will be turned in your favor. Amen. And as Moses declared, Pharaoh and his cohorts that you see today, tomorrow by now, because of the power of the living God, they will not be here again. But you Amen. shall be called victorious in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you God so bless much. You. God bless you. So those of you on Facebook Live, I'm ending Facebook Live here. If you have any prayer requests, you can send it to my WhatsApp now. My WhatsApp will be working, so I concentrate on those on Zoom. God bless and keep you. Keep the fire burning and move to a place of fire in Jesus' name.